through YouTube, Herpes Derp here, and it's time for the weekly Warframe show in which I embarrass myself. But this is gonna be great! Alright, randomized loadout, let's see what we got. Yeah, the uh, story mission today is Interception, which could be a significant issue if the oh, Warframe we get doesn't have. Ordis wonders, what are you thinking about? Yeah, shut up, Ordis, shut up. If <laughs> the Warframe we have doesn't have very much crowd control built in. Uh. Hopefully, oh, I forgot. I was going to swap cats for this particular mission. Ah, well, we'll keep on working with that Semitic about this week. I'll have to set up for the Dyers next. Uh, let's see, Excalibur Umbra, which, spoiler alert, it's the Umbra Warframe. If you haven't done the the uh, whole sacrifice and whatnot, then if be prepared operator, to be amazed by all these Umbra mods. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't maxed them out yet. I still got one more point in the intense in the uh, intensified vitality and two more. I can put it into fiber, but that's all right. Uh, this is a chromatic blade build, of course, so that I'm running on my Excalibur Umbra. I don't have uh, other builds set up, but it it seems to me like he was designed around an exalted blade build just because uh, of that. Where is it? The intensify mod right there. Let's reorganize those because the intensify mod is giving you a huge amount of power strength, right? And that's allowing his, uh, that's allowing his Exalted Blade to put out a whole lot more ability to damage. Now, one thing I used to always do with Excalibur, right, was I always used to have a secondary build on my Excalibur set up using Ulrich Extended, so bada bing, and then something like uh, this even more power range, of course, to set up with that, and then the uh, Radial Blind Augment, right? So that you could be spamming Radial Blinds, setting up enemies to take tons of damage, and then have the Radial Blind hit entire rooms at a time. Now, the setup of polarities here, of course, would mean that I'm still having to use these mods. Now, the upside is that the Umbral Intensify can negate the reduced range from Overextended, but the downside is that I don't have a whole lot of space left here to fill around with a build, so it would pretty much be guaranteed that I'm going to just run... I mean, obviously I gotta put a... Exilus on here. See, here's the thing, right? I had my old... I had this all set up on my old Excalibur, then I got Umbra and deleted my old Excalibur, and I had only have set up the one build on new Umbra, because I was just using the uh, Chromatic Blade to farm. Anyways... Continuity to, and uh, Fleety Expertise is probably the only thing I can get to fit in here. And I actually think I'm going to set that up with something like this. Tenno, there's a time limitation alert available. Partly Check so that I can get partly so that I can just get my duration to still be positive because you want the uh, blind duration to still be above zero. And partly because uh, I'm actually thinking about the way this build's set up. And I think that what the way to make this work is to just sit back on a lower rank streamline there. And go ahead and go with just overextended and cutting drift for the range mods there. Now this doesn't look great to me because there's no knockdown mods involved in this build anywhere. So if if this if you know if Elmer gets knocked down, then yeah, he's not doing too well. But I mean, Excalibur on about a thousand armor, seven hundred seventy or a thousand health, seven hundred seventy armor, whatnot. That's always going to be pretty good. And as you can see here. This build is set up rather similarly in terms of just being streamline, flux expertise, continuity, and these mods here. Uh, the chromatic blade is the augment, and I've got hunter adrenaline as the rem in the remaining slot here because I just wanted to have a lot of efficiency so I could keep the chromatic blade on, and fire you know fire and forget it channeling that kind of thing, and then hunter adrenaline so I can get some more energy while it's active and hand spring because knockdown recovery is going to be very important in my opinion. And the thing about it, right, is that the radial blind still hits a 25 meter radius at base, so I feel like it's still pretty strong. Now, obviously, with the 200% power range build, that's going to be a 50 a 50 meter radius. So every time you spam out, that blinds an entire room. So it's effective, but I'm not going to be using that. I don't think. Uh, I'm still just going to work with chromatic blade to farm things. Now, as for the remaining weapons I rolled here, I've got a Tenora, which I do enjoy this weapon. I feel like the incredible lack of recoil on, on a Tenora means that it, it is a weapon that is very much a contender for being able to outpace the Soma Prime. I also feel like the higher status chance on the Tenora definitely is worth noting, because it, 
uh, if you take a build like this, you, put, you take a similar build onto the Soma Prime. In fact, I think these are the same eight mods I use my Soma Prime. And you take that similar build and you put it onto the Soma, right? It'll have a higher crit chance. It'll have a much higher critical multiplier on it. But the status chance is still only going to be sitting at something like 30%, right? Whereas with the Tenora, you can break 60% status chance. You can be proccing all three of the IPS statuses and Corrosive here with Malignant Force High Voltage. And that means that this is going to do a lot better versus armored targets, which is good because if I remember right, it's a Grenier Sword. Well, so we'll see. Anyways, the remaining mods besides the dual stat mods here, we've got Serration for base damage, Split Chamber for multi-shot, Prime Shred because the weapon has a spool up mechanic to it, and so having the fire rate it does help with spool up a lot, plus punch through. Uh, and then three crit mods, Point Strike, Vital Sense, and Hammer Shot for the hybrid crit damage status chance. All of which feel really good on that weapon. Then I've got these Twin Ruggas here. I've never really put any form into these, but they are a fun little weapon. If you know what the Twin Ruggas are, they're essentially a, a two-shot shotgun pistol thing. So you fire the left Ruggas, you fire the right Ruggas, and then you've got to reload them. Uh, and they're essentially set up as a status weapon. Now, they're, they're a mixture of impact and puncture damage primarily, so you, I'm setting these up for elemental damage more than anything else. Got uh, Jolt Pistol Pestilence for Corrosive, and then Scorch and a Prime Heated Charge into the default dash polarity. So I can have a bunch of fire damage as well. Then of course the generic Hornet Strike, Lethal Torret, Barrel Diffusion. For all the damage, all the fire rate, all the multi-shot. The last mod here is just Augur Pack because I don't have the capacity to equip anything more impactful. I do feel like that's the right way to go with it though, just because we're already at close to 100% status chance. I would be, And I'd be more worried about having the, a shotgun be at 100% status chance if it was able to put out slash blocks and things, but this one isn't. And as you can see, it's in this particular case, it's still above 90% chance even before uh, multi-shot. Now on shotguns, again, that's not 90% per projectile because they have inherent multi-shot to them, so you can't really assume that each projectile has a 90% chance to proc a status. It'd probably be closer to 70 or 80. Uh, anyways, we're not going to worry about that though because I'm not... I'm not a huge fan of those Ragas. I feel like the low clip size makes them struggle a lot, and to fix that you might want to go with uh, a reload mod, perhaps. Yeah. Anyways, as you can see, these dual Zorans I have here have an excellent reload mod. Critical chance, attack speed, reduced slide crit isn't really that important, reduced damage, or increased damage of core opus isn't huge, but it's the critical chance and the huge amount of attack speed on these that. I think it's fantastic. Now, what we're going to do with that is I'm stacking Blood Rush and, of course, Drifting Contact so that I can have absolutely massive crits coming out of this thing. With a 55% crit chance, this Blood Rush should be breaking uh, should be breaking into orange red crits, that territory, by the time this thing hits a 2 times comma multiplier, which is only 15 hits. That's just ridiculous. And then we've got, of course, Pressure Point, because Pressure Point is fantastic. Uh, life Strike, because I like Life Strike on everything right nowadays. We're going to Shatter for more crit damage, since we're going to be critting all over the place. And uh, we've got some Voltaic Strike and Buzzkill as a little bit of elemental damage. I've got Slash damage, then I've got, I've got a bit of status chance. Now, do I know why I'm using Voltaic Strike here? No, I don't. I do feel like a better mod might be something like Volcanic Edge, just so I can stack up uh, heat procs to deal more damage over time in addition to the occasional slash proc. But I, I guess with all, the big downside of the dual Zoran, right? The big historic downside of the dual Zoran is that they do a fantastic amount of slash damage, they do a fantastic amount of uh, they do a fantastic amount of crit damage, but they have almost no status chance. And one of the fantastic things about the dual Zorans actually is the fact that Swirling Tiger, if you look at this pause combo here, White and Claws, one of these secondary hits, I think it may be the last one, is actually a knockdown proc. And the dual Zora do have a guaranteed slash proc when you do a uh, ground finisher on enemies, which is fantastic. So I feel like the reasoning behind this Voltaic Strike here is that um, if I, this ever does proc an elemental status, I would like it to be some big swinging elemental effect that hits multiple enemies since it's going to be so infrequent, right? So, since electricity arcs, I can see that but being a thing, but you know what? I'm going to go with Volcanic Edge for now. Because we're fighting Grenier and Heat's pretty good versus Grenier, and I shouldn't be tabbing out because I've got a couple more things to show off. I've got my Exalted Blade build here, of course. It comes with the, the Sacrificial Pressure and the Sacrificial Steel for base damage and crit chance. And I'm going to go ahead and amp up the 
30% crit chance there with Organ Shatter just to increase the crit damage, but that's not the focus of the build. The focus of the build is Condition Overload, because of the fact that with this build, the weapon has a 100% status chance, and it even reflects that 100% status chance because of uh, Chromatic Blade. Now, the reason why it's breaking 100% is because an, the amount of status chance on the Chromatic Blade is flat. The 50% is just an additive 50% chance, and it scales with Ability of Strength. So, if I was to take that augment off for a moment, the status chance on Umber Blade would probably be something, yeah, just 20 something percent. Just a tiny bit of extra because of the two dual stats that I've got going on here. I believe the base damage, in fact, I believe that base status chance was 10%, right? And then it was getting plus 120, so it was up to 22%. But with Chromatic Blade, we're gaining an additional. 50% times 160 would be 80% flat status chance. So this thing should be sitting at 90 without either... Oops. The blade itself should be sitting at 90% status without e any uh, status mods equipped. Yeah, perfect. So we equip Prime Fever Strike and Voltaic Strike for the maximum amount of corrosive damage to make sure this shreds through armor quite fast. And then I've got the Volcanic Hedge on here because it needs a second type of status, right? Because with Condition Overload, you want multiple status types so that you can stack up the buff in more ways than one. And without any physical damage, because of the fact that, um, because of the fact that Chromatic Blade removes all physical damage, all IPS from the Umber Blade, it's definitely important to have a secondary damage type on here. Last but not least, of course, Prime Fury. Prime Fury because more attack speed. And you've seen the cat, I believe, last week, something like that. But anyways, here, there's the bill again. Animal Instinct being important, Maul Bite, Hunter Recovery, Link Health, Link Armor, and Medikit for tank, and then Mischief Charm as the basic cat things, and of course Sharpen Claws because Sharpen Claws on any cat. So there we go. Uh, I'm trying to think here. I think for this particular mission, since this is an interception, I'm actually going to just go ahead and set him up with Naramon just to keep the combo counter going on the Exalted Blade. Now, and maybe not, maybe not, because the thing about it, right, is that the waves of energy that come out of Exalted Blade don't contribute to the combo counter. So I might actually set him up with just Xenuric instead, just so I can refresh my energy pool faster. I don't know, we'll see. I'll try it with Xenuric, I'm not sure. There's multiple different ways he can play Excalibur. Obviously he's very tanky and he deals a lot of damage, doesn't have a lot of crowd control. But he's very tanky. Yeah, Grenier Grenier, that's what I thought. So let's see if I can solo the interception mission with Exalted Blade and how powerful uh, Umbra's Exalted Blade is. Because that, that sucker deals a ton of damage. Believe me. Oh, and it's a small room too, which is good because the uh, blade does tend to penetrate objects. Oh man, look at that. Look at those orange cuts coming up so rapidly. That's on a 16 combo counter. I think it was may have been already firing into the orange just on the 5 times counter. Crit chance on these Zorans is just insane. The 5 star ribbon disposition on these means you can get such huge rolls. And I'm not even sure if I'm completely satisfied with this roll yet or not. The attack speed is fantastic and the crit chance is fantastic. I'd rather have crit damage. Oh god. Right, bonus damage. Well, let's get out the Exalted Blade and start firing that off since that's got the uh, forward block on it. But I need to get capping on some of these points. Look at those damage numbers, though. Ah, uh, they're already capping back. Alpha! Yeah, can get back here in time. This is the problem with soloing Interception. That's why Interception is kind of one of the most broken game modes. It's just that it's entirely a logistical game mode. How fast can you walk around the map and stand in places? <laughs> and the enemies, of course, already have the uh, the advantage in this kind of scenario. Just because they have more people so they can be standing in multiple places at once. Bit of a broken game mode, in my opinion. But it's alright because at the first tier of the sortie, El Ex you know, the Exalted Blade should be able to absolutely demolish enemies straight up. I'm not really worried about that. Oh! That's right, Pyrus Projects is still going on. <laughs> oh, you can count on me, Cressa, you can count on me. I'll deal with them, but first things first, I gotta stand here on Bravo. 
One nice thing about Umbra. Oh my god, he vanished quickly. As the direct hits from that Umbra Blade, right? The waves of energy don't deal nearly as much damage as the direct hits because of the fall. The fact that they have damage fall off, which is always something to keep in mind. Yeah, very nice thing about Umbra, right? Is just the fact that he's got Slash Dash to work with to get around the map, which is why I'm happy with this as a pickup. Now, I would like to pull out one of my other weapons. I don't have Life Strike on that. I'd like to pull out one of my other weapons and start we have lost demonstrating how they work. But I am just having so much trouble staying up into this bonus puncture damage because that's dealing a huge amount of damage. Did I really manage to cap it all four while I was just trying to go get a Life Strike off? Wow. This may be a bit of an issue. So yeah, I'm not going to be showing off those other weapons too much. Twin Ragas aren't that impressive. <laughs> my build on that certainly is... Not worth it. Here, I'll, I'll pull them out once. There, I kill the guy. You can see how much damage they deal. They do deal a ton of base damage, but I, I'm just not able to stay alive without the damage block coming out of this. And one thing that's definitely worth noting is that... Uh, one thing I thought about throwing onto my Exalted Blade was a... Uh, a a Life Steel mod of some kind. I think it actually can proc... Uh, what's his face? The, the, what's the thing where it, with the healing? What's the thing where it heals on hit if the enemy is affected by stats? I think Exalted Blade's waves can actually proc that. Ah, oh, can. I do believe that the waves can proc that. It's just that there's definitely a it's definitely a problem with. Uh... Oh dear, I forgot. Umbra's Umbra's does ha have actions while out of the operator. It's a bit of an issue, but yeah. Uh, I. What was I saying? I believe, what is it, Healing Return? I believe Healing Return does work on Exalted Blade. So you can use that to life steal while act, the blade is active. I just don't have anything like that. Which can be more than a little bit of an issue. Uh, I'm just spamming here. I bet they're going, oh, they're going for Alpha next, okay. So I'm going to go pick up Charlie because I'm behind and I need to focus on objectives here rather than worry about fighting enemies too much. The enemy have captured a tower. Man, you don't. This is the kind of thing you don't see in multiplayer games enough either. You know, people actually focusing on objective combat rather than just going after, rather than just going after kills and whatnot. Uh, one thing that's definitely important too is the fact that I was able to res the cat there. The cat does have the ability to heal me because of the hunter recovery, so I'm I'm using that as essentially my only source of sustain right now. And with 700 armor. This is oh, and the damage block that Excalibur gets from his Exalted Blade to the front. This is definitely not impossible. It's more the caps that I'm just worried about, you know. It's more just the capture points I'm worried about. Woo! We are in this is quite difficult. Oh boy. And again, I would love to show off the Tenora more, because I love the Tenora. I think it's a fantastic gun. And it deals a huge amount of damage. It's just with the with the bonus damage on these guys, I'm just having trouble staying alive, period. The enemy have captured a tower. Go, Cat, go, heal me. Oh, God. Important thing to keep in mind is that, yeah, the the damage block from... What's... The damage block from Homer Blade only plays to the front. There were some enemies all around me there. I should probably be using my... Uh, actual blind a bit more. It's, you're gonna see huge numbers coming up. The uh, radial howl too. Probably should be using that just to stagger enemies, slow them down, some damage onto them. I think I've got this, but uh, there's a, there's always a second round too. It's a problem. Yeah, see the damage block only applies from the front. Those folks behind me were just hurting so much. Oh, what the? the? I had 500 plus health left. What hit me? Woo! Alright. Well, I'll just go ahead and show off the other weapons <laughs> with the uh, remaining time here. Because the Tenora can absolutely just demolish these suckers. But. They are broadcasting oh boy. Alright, let's go after Delta first. That's usually a good way to start about it. Go after Delta, get all the enemies grouped into the middle of the map, and then start running around the uh, outskirts capping of the points. 
Cause you to take significantly less aggro when you do it that way. At least at the start of the, the fight. Plus, enemies do tend to be grouped up a bit more. Is there someone back here? The door opens very suspiciously. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, the Tadora has just a huge ammo capacity, even without something like a carrier or any mods affecting it. It's still sitting on 900 ammo. And a massive clip, even bigger. Well, not bigger than the Soma Prime. The Soma Prime is sitting on 200, but. The enemy have taken a still a very large clip. And as you can see, there's almost no recoil to this thing. That's one of the main reasons why I like the Tadora. Because once it's spooled up, it's almost pinpoint accurate, so it's got a very large effective range due to that. I'm going to pull out the Exalt's Blade because I think I'm going to run out of time to be explaining what this does. Uh, where are they headed to it? You can see where the enemies are capping, by the way, using those little blinking lights up in the upper left corner corner. You can see they just went to start capping Charlie because Charlie started blinking. That damage is real, but I gotta get my back to the wall here. Oh god! You have captured a radio tower. Yeah. Alright, let's pull off of the Exalted Blade for a moment just to conserve energy. Not that I'm having any real energy struggles. Another thing worth noting with the Umber right is that I do feel like I may be able to get enough efficiency for Exalted Blade just with uh, Rage and Streamline. If you like playing Yuri Umber that way, I do not feel like that's a bad playstyle at all. Because then you'll have some more, you'll have the ability to have more duration onto him, and you could also have a spare mod slot, which you could use for, say, even more health. Or you could use that for. Ow! Well, there are a lot of things you could be using that for. Really? Ah, Jesus. I just have no idea what killed me there. And here's the issue with Excalibur, right? He is a very survivable frame, in general, but in practice, he requires a bit of a team because he has no crowd control, at least not good crowd control, he has this, but, which is fantastic, but ultimately will eat through his energy pool pretty rapidly. Yes, I know, I'm not getting them caps, I know, I know. He's, he's not designed to spam out crowd control anyway, it's not like Rano is, and that's really... He's got a lot of survivability inherent in his kit, but he relies on being able to kill enemies rapidly to be able to genuinely uh, deal with a large group of people. He relies much harder on damage than he does on crowd control. Not like Rhino, where he, Rhino tends to rely on his stomp. Okay. Uh, let's set down the Umber back here. Go get the cat, because I absolutely need that cat to keep alive. No, don't, don't push up, Umber. Don't push up. Uh... Okay, that'll do it. Oh god, no, I won't do it. Oh, this is chaotic. I need to cap points because they are getting a huge advantage on me. So let's go grab Delta. Let them have Charlie in exchange for Delta. Oh, that's actually passionate straight through that geometry. Nice. I did not know you could punch through that. Interesting. I would have. My assumption would have been that that's not able to be punched through. Oh boy. Jesus, bonus damage. I tell you, bonus damage in sorties is more than a little bit broken. I'm not even gonna bother getting that. So I wanna keep Captain Bravo, complete the mission. Bonus damage in sorties is more than a little bit broken. It's so it makes the, the whole fight so much more difficult than most other modifiers do. Just because enemies well, as you've been seeing, right, this is a fairly tanky warframe. And enemies are able to one-shot so easily in bonus damage, you know? It's very much a problem. Heard someone spawn. I can see them on the map. Maybe? Yes. Come on, I gotta keep capping. Let's gonna get Delta. We're on Bravo, you can see that cap coming in. I'm gonna spam in that general direction. That Nox does not want to go down. There it goes. Woo! Where's that fellow? Just do it off the Howl to get him blind to wherever he is. Howl, of course, Howl has to have line of sight to be effective. And still only got the 25% base range. That might be actually what you, I might try with this. It's just running Streamline and uh, Stretch, rather than worrying too much about the fleet expertise to be fully efficient. Because this is already... Exalted Blade already can stand for a very long time. And with Rage going on and such a tanky Warframe, I can gain a ton of energy that way. 
I just don't know that it's fantastic because again, this doesn't. I don't have any consistent ways to gain it. health back while fighting. Oh, this is gonna be really close, isn't it? You have a radio this is gonna be really close. Interception is so hard to solo as well. The enemy have taken oh, who got onto it? Oh, I stepped off of the point. Shit. Oh man, profanity, profanity. They're capping Delta too. I just have to get some of them dead. I just have to get some of them dead from over here. While I'm capping Bravo. Otherwise, there's no way. Oh man, they're at 96. I don't think this is a one round. Solar interception is just so difficult. Okay. I can get out to Delta. Neutralize it really fast. Got the kitty crits too. Got the kitty crits coming in from my uh, Smita. Oh, maybe. Maybe, maybe. It's gonna be. It's good. We'll have to see if it ticks one more time. Well, it's neutralized. Okay, Char they're on Charlie. They're on Charlie. Shit! Yes! Okay, okay, I think this might be it. I think they may have got it. 99%! Oh, that was. That was clutch. That was incredibly clutch, and I think I only have one revive left, too. Oh, boy. Uh, this is just the problem with Excalibur in the general, in a general sense, right? He's got so much damage built into his kit, but he's just not <laughs> necessarily able to function very well without his squad, you know? Ah. <sighs> I should be. Get, I should definitely get some uh, lenses out to some of those things. Now that I'm looking at them. I'll enjoy multiple of those weapons. All right. Well, down to the wire and interception. That's definitely the hardest mission type to solo, in my opinion. Even harder than defense or survival or whatnot. Well, I'll, I'll, even or uh, mobile defense and things like that. Just because of the fact that you're by doing that alone, you are guaranteeing that the enemy has an easier time getting two points and capturing them. You know, you can't, it's not like when you have a squad where you can set one person on every single point. So I do feel like uh, Interception should maybe receive a balance pass with Digital Extremes just to maybe reduce enemy count while it's being soloed, but there's there's definitely, uh, it's definitely doable as you can see. It's definitely doable, it just is quite difficult. Anyways, uh, that's everything for the day, so we got away with that somehow. Uh, that is the weekly Monday randomizer. Herp to derp out. Hope you enjoyed it.